What is going on everybody? Thanks for checking out today's episode. Today we're going to dive in talking a little bit about my smallmouth bass setup. So anytime I'm going out smallmouth fishing, I usually take just a couple different rods and I really want to talk about those specific rods that I take as well as some of the gear that I run with it such as the line. We're not really going to talk about baits or anything like that today, but mainly my rod setup and if you like this kind of stuff, you guys stick around, join the channel, subscribe, also like if you like this content. Well, let's dive into this video. Okay, so when we're talking about the smallmouth rod setup, the reason I like a certain type of rod and mainly a spinning rod for smallmouth fishing is because the smallmouth you know, typically aren't gonna get as big as a largemouth bass. So you're not gonna really need a super heavy power rod to pull those things in. And they put up a good fight anyway. So being able to use this light, medium power spinning rod is gonna give you a lot more fun. It's gonna get, add to that action that they're gonna give you. And it's just a awesome rod to use. So let's, so let's talk about rod choice first so the length of the rod i usually like to stick around six foot six inch all the way up to about a seven two rod and i think that is just perfect for me it's going to be good for fishing off a kayak boat as well as doing bank fishing so uh, i like to do all of those i really like to get out and wade fish for smallmouth i like to be in areas of current where i can really walk out into those rocks and that's typically where i have my most success at and those rod links are going to do good for you in that range and they're pretty much readily available at any store you go to looking for a fishing rod okay let's talk about the power i like to stick with a medium power rod if i'm going to be fishing some heavy heavy cover or something like that maybe go up to a medium heavy but typically for smallmouth i think a medium power is perfect okay let's talk about the action the action you know, I like a fast action tip usually most of the time that is going to give you the most backbone when it comes to setting the hook, but I will go down to a moderate fast action if I need to. And typically for those moderate actions, you're going to be paying a little bit more. They usually come on some of the more premium rods that you get out there. Just looking at this one, this one is a fast action, you can see seven foot medium power rod. Okay, so that sums up the rods, and I, I just keep it pretty simple, guys. Honestly, you can go out to Walmart and just, just about buy anything and have fun catching fish with it. It's kind of how you're presenting the baits to the fish that really means the most. Uh, but, you know, with that being said, you can get the most out of your gear by setting up the best way possible for your application. Okay, we have another rod here, and I do have it paired up with a... 3,000 size or a 30 size reel. So talking about the reels, the reel size, you know, for smallmouth fishing, I would even go down to a 2,000 size or a 20 size reel. You're really not needing a lot of that winching power to get these guys in. They're, you know, they put up a good fight, but it's, it's no problem for a 2,000 size reel. And I keep it pretty simple just because they're more available. I just go with the 30 size reel. And that gives me plenty of power if I'm out largemouth fishing or doing whatever type of fishing, you know, it's gonna get the job done. So I usually keep it pretty simple and just do a 30 size. And it's gonna give me enough drag and it's gonna give me enough capacity to run braided line and pretty much whatever time of line I wanna use. 30 size reel, you'll be just fine. So moving into the line of choice, I do like to run braid. So my braid of choice here I usually go out and buy this at Walmart because it's the cheapest. It hasn't let me down. It lasts at least a good season before I have to replace it. So I'm not really worried about it. And I get this spider wire easy braid and I usually get it in a 15 pound test. And then I'll match that up with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. But if I'm doing a lot of bank fishing, I would run a, a 10 pound test braid if I wanted to, that would give me a lot more castability and I could cast this thing probably another 20 yards further than I can with that 15 pound braid. And you wouldn't think it would cause that much drag, but it actually does. And that way the leader will have a little bit more weight to it and you can cast it a little bit further than you could with 15. 
and I'm really not worried about breaking off or anything. 10 pound braid is gonna be plenty strong enough to withstand any type of hook sets or anything like that. And if I were to hook set on something that wasn't a fish, like a log or a rock, you know, it's still probably not gonna break off, okay? So you're gonna be good there. Uh, and then for the fluorocarbon leader, this is Berkeley Vanish. And I usually stick with a 10 pound fluorocarbon for this because it's gonna give me enough strength to withstand those hook sets once again and pull in just about any type of fish that I'm gonna encounter out here on the river. And if I'm out there doing largemouth fishing on a lake, it's gonna handle that just fine as well because I'm typically gonna be doing some type of finesse style fishing while I'm doing that. So I'm not gonna be really fishing a lot of heavy cover if I'm planning on doing that. Okay, so I said 10 pound, you know, I would be tempted to go down to an eight pound test if I was fishing something super, super clear where the fish might be a little bit more finicky and have the potential to actually see this, but 10 pound test isn't that big. So I would feel pretty comfortable doing just 10 pound tests all the time, keeping it kind of standard. All right, guys, I hope you like this video of my smallmouth rod setup. You know, keep it pretty simple. That's all it takes, guys. It doesn't take a lot of complexity to catch smallmouth. It's just about getting out there and having fun. So that's what I'm about to do right now. You can see the sun's popping up over here. So hopefully this video had enough light to actually be able to see it, but we're gonna be hitting the spillway again. It's right here in my background and we're gonna be catching some smallmouth right now in a minute. But guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and you know we'd love to have you. There's a lot of videos over on my main YouTube page. Go ahead and check those out. There's a lot of how-to videos and just a lot of fishing videos in general. But hopefully this video gave you a little bit more insight to setting up your smallmouth bass rods. And this can pretty much be a all around setup if you're looking to go out and do some finesse style fishing for just about any type of bass. It's gonna be a pretty good rounded setup for you. All right guys, catch you later. There we go, as soon as I hit the freaking water, right in that grass line. Come on, don't break off. Don't break off. I think it's a pretty good one right here. Another, oh, that's a, a small one. Pretty good one. All right, bud, stay on. That's a pretty good one right here. And he hammered that Ned rig. Way in there.